Now, some of you may remember, regrettably, that I did a video a few months back on the English counties trying to find them on a map. Now, I did okay actually finding them on a map. I scored like 80 something percent because I had learned the counties for some just really odd random reason. Like when I was sick one afternoon, I was just like, hmm, let me like learn where stuff is on a map. And English counties just happened to be one of those things that I was interested in learning. But unfortunately, I did an absolutely horrible job at actually pronouncing the counties while I was doing it. Like, an embarrassingly bad job. <laughs> I think the worst one was when I got to Worcestershire and I kept saying Worcestershire. And then I was like, hmm, you know what? This kind of looks like the Worcestershire sauce. And I pronounced it just, you know, perfectly when I said that. I did not realize that there was a connection between the two. <laughs> so yeah, it was bad. <laughs> So I came across this video that we're going to watch today, how the English counties got their names. I kind of learned a bit about their history and, you know, where the names came from, you know, that I could not pronounce. I also watched Jay Foreman's video on how our British place names got their names a few months ago as well. So what I remember from that is that there is a lot of history there with the Romans and like the Scandinavian countries, just a bunch of different countries that came in and kind of settled in Britain. They brought a lot of their, you know, language and planted it there in Britain. So you have some names that kind of derive from Saxony, from the Romans, etc. So I at least know that much and I'm assuming that this video is going to get more in depth into that. And if you're watching this from England, let me know which county you hail from. And also a quick reminder to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And you can also check out my social media and discord links in my pinned comment in my description if you're interested in that. So let's go ahead and let's learn a bit about how England got some of its names. We've explained many, many times how exactly the nation of the United Kingdom works. It's split over two main land masses, the island of Great Britain and part of the island of Ireland. And across these two land masses, the United Kingdom splits into four smaller nations, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. I did learn this However, also things can in a previous video. Down even further, as these four home nations split, like many countries, into counties. It's the counties of just one of these nations we will be looking into today. Those being the counties of the biggest and most populated home nation of the United Kingdom my home nation of England. England is made up of 48 counties, by some counts anyway, and each seems to have its own cultural identity and image, and their names are perhaps one of England's biggest exports. The names of these counties pop up all over languages, in the names of certain foods like the Cornish pasty and Cumberland sausage, to breeds of dog like the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and of course these names are used as names in other parts of the world, like the US state of New Hampshire. Even if you aren't from England and have never been here, it's likely many of these names or ring a bell in your brain. These counties all like Worcestershire also vary from huge expanses of land to just singular cities in their greater areas. So today, let's look into how the counties of England got their names, and hopefully one day in the future we can look into the counties of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland too. However, yes, just I to do make that. things clear, what counties am I covering exactly? As I said, I aim to tackle 48 counties, but by some counts there are more and less. It's because these county borders differ depending on circumstances and many other things. I am focusing on the ceremonial counties, which were formalised in 1997, as these are the traditional counties of England most people have heard of. Day to day. I think those were the ones that I did, the ceremonial counties in that previous Although video. Many of these counties are split into smaller patches, like how Devon is the ceremonial county, but in reality it's governed as three counties, Devon, Plymouth and Torbay. It's a minor detail, but I know some of you in the comments will want to point it out. And I'm assuming it's that Plymouth that our Plymouth is named after, you know, Plymouth Rock over here, the pilgrims, you know landed on. Speaking of Devon, let's start just west of that county, in the deep southwest of England, with Cornwall. This county has a very strong, unique identity, oh, even with their pretty. own language, and the name is thought to come from that language, with the name of a tribe that once lived here, the Cornovi. This name is thought to mean horn people, due to Cornwall's horn-like shape. And as mentioned, we have Devon uh. to Cornwall's east, known for its beaches and Dartmoor. The name is too thought to come from the Celtic natives, the Dumoni, whose name is thought to relate to the deep valleys of Devon. Northeast of Devon we have Somerset, a place best known for its cider and the village of Cheddar, which yes the cheese wow, is named so after. The name sounds like the season. Oh, 
I had heard that. The counties, you guys also have cheeses that each county apparently has. I would, I don't know if a video exists on that or not, but that would be interesting, I think, to, you know, just... It's a really weird, random thing to learn about is, you know, like, the cheeses that come from the counties. But apparently that's a thing over there that I had no idea about. The cheddar comes from Somerset, okay? Also, this is a really, really pretty... <laughs> pretty landscape. I'm assuming all of these uh, like white dots here are sheep, which is uh, something you don't get over here in the US. I'm sure that there are sheep, you know, on farms, ran you know, somewhere here, but mostly we just see cows and horses. So that's a little bit different. And uh, also the architecture, you know, just this old style like brick architecture. You just don't, you don't see that over here, obviously. Season of summer for a good reason. Better. Which yes, Devon, we have Somerset, a place best known for its cider and the village of Cheddar, which yes, the cheese is named after. The name sounds like the season <laughs> of summer for a good reason, as it comes from Old English and means the people who live at Somerton, with Somerton being a settlement there. This settlement's name is thought to mean summer settlement, hence why it relates to the season. The city of Bristol and its surrounding okay. towns is actually a county unto itself. Bristol is a famous city, known for being the birth of... Oh my goodness. Look at that bridge. It looks like that there is a uh, car or something on the bottom part of that bridge, like right in here. I don't know if that is like a transport, a different type of, type of transport to go across the bridge. I love landscapes like this with uh, with mountains and water, and bridges. It's, and again, the architecture is just completely different to what you would see over here. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> You know, I think England is not known for its, like, just huge, vast landscapes like we have over here. I feel like England has a lot of beauty, though, but it's more in, like, tucked away type type areas, like smaller tucked away areas that you kind of have to seek out, maybe. I don't know. I mean, sure, I'm sure it looks pretty just, like, driving through the countryside and stuff, too, but stuff like this, I would feel like you would need to know where this stuff is to go see it. So it's a little different geography, you know, to the U.S., Obviously, because it's on the other side of the world, it's a completely different country, different climate and everything. Hence why it relates to the season. The city of Bristol and its surrounding towns is actually a county unto itself. Bristol is a famous city, known for being the birthplace of Blackbeard, Clifton Suspension Bridge, Skins, and Ardman Animation. The name does actually relate to bridges, <laughs> thought to mean the meeting place by the bridge, in relation to the many bridges across the River Avon. Going back south, however, southeast of Devon, we have Dorset, another seaside county. It's the pebbles of one of its beaches as to where the name is thought to possibly wow. come from. It may be from Britonic and mean place with fist-sized pebbles, which are very big pebbles indeed. And it's from here that we run into a word-forming element you're going to be sick of by the end of this video, Shire. For my calculations, <laughs> 24 of these- This is what tripped me up in my county's video. I kept saying Shire instead of Shire, like you guys told me it was pronounced, which is stupid because over here, you know, New Hampshire, and then the, I kept referring to a, a, a road in Los Angeles, um, Wilshire. So I don't know why I saw this over in England and I was like, Shire? I don't know. because I think it's because it was a different country and my brain just like had a brain fart and was like, oh, they got to pronounce it differently over there. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah. Sick of by the end of this video, Shire. From my calculations, 24 of these 48 county names end with Shire. That's half of them. In fact, sometimes the counties of England are known as the Shires of England, and it's a word that inspired Tolkien to name the realm of the hobbits the Shire. This is an old English term and simply means things like province to name the Is that a real place or is that a movie set? That can't be real. That's got to be like a movie set or something. There's no way people live in, like, little holes in the ground like that. Or maybe it's from the movie. I don't know. Like, I have not seen The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, or I don't even know if there's a movie called The Hobbit. I'm not into fantasy, so I haven't seen those movies. Maybe this is, like, a scene from the movie, and I don't know about it. <laughs> Name the realm of the hobbits the Shire. This is an old English term and simply means things like province slash stewardship slash district. So it's no surprise to see it pop up so much. A lot of the time the part that precedes Shire in these county names relates to a major settlement in that county. So apologies if I get a little repetitive with these. The first Shire we come across is a Wiltshire, Wiltshire. home of Stonehenge. Wiltshire, Wiltshire is named after the town of Wilton. I just said Shire again. Oh my gosh. Like, what is wrong with me? And again, I was thinking Wiltshire. Like, Wil we Wilshire is the street in LA without- we don't have the T in it. It's just Wilshire. Spelled the same way without the T. Why did I just say Wiltshire? <laughs> oh my gosh. 
It's just like my brain goes, it's over in England, you gotta say Shire. <laughs> Oh my god, I'll, I'll get it down eventually. The Shire we come across is a Wiltshire, the home of Stonehenge. Wiltshire is named after the town of Wilton in the county, which in turn comes from the River Wiley that goes through the county. Then we have Berkshire, which the internet tells me is known for sheep, which simply means hilly place. And below Berkshire, we have Hampshire, home of the historic cities of Southampton and Portsmouth. And the Hamp in Hampshire comes from the Hamp in Southampton, with Hampton Port- uh, Sorry I keep pausing, it's Portsmouth- is it Portsmouth where the HMS Victory is docked? Is that the place? I feel like that's the right place, but I can't remember off the top of my head. If this is the, um, if this is Portsmouth right here, don't see the HMS Victory in this particular shot, but it could be in a different location, maybe. And Portsmouth. And the Hamp in Hampshire comes from the Hamp in Southampton, with Hampton popping up often in England and means a water meadow. Okay, maybe it's Moving maybe that's away Hampshire. from Shires for a moment, we have the Isle of Wight, England's only entirely island-based county. There's a few ideas so as cool. to where this name comes from, but the most popular theory is that it relates to lifting slash raising, as the island is raised out of the sea. And east of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, back onto the mainland, we have Sussex, which is actually split into the two counties of East and West Sussex. East Sussex is the famous city of Brighton, and West Sussex has, well, me. This name relates to Britain's ancient <laughs> residents of the Saxons, who came from northern Germany slash Denmark. It simply means a land of the South Saxons. And there used to be a land of West Saxons too with Wessex. And we still have a land of East Saxons, which we'll cover in a moment. And further southeast in England, we have Kent, famous for Dover and its white cliffs. As this is the part of oh. England closest to Europe, it has a name of Roman slash Greek roots, though its fort ultimately derived from an old British Celtic word, meaning coastal district due to its location moving west of kent that's cool i didn't know that uh that kent was where the dover cliffs are also i know that i have some of my uh on my mom's side you know, i have some relatives some direct descendants that are from kent actually we have family records going back to the 1600s of uh of them living in kent and uh they at some point immigrated over here to the u.s that's cool i didn't know that's where the white cliffs of dover were which is celtic word meaning coastal district due to its location location. Moving west of Kent, we have Surrey. Potterheads will know this county as the likely home of the fictional Little Whingin, where Harry Potter himself lives. Surrey simply means oh. a southerly district, as it's south of the most famous place in the UK, London. And as for London, mm. it's split into two counties. The city of London is its ancient core, and Greater London and its surrounding boroughs like Croydon in the south and Enfield in the north. We don't know where exactly the name London comes from, but there's a range of ideas while being named after an ancient king called Lud, to it come from ancient Celtic words meaning wide flowing river in relation to the Thames. As for why one of these counties has a city of attached to it and why the other has greater attached to it, I'm sure you can figure out. And as mentioned, we have the land of the East Saxons, that is with Essex. UK TV fans will know this oh. county for Gavin and Stacey, and the reality show which states that Essex is in fact the only way. This isn't the case, however, as west of Essex, we come back to the Shires with Hertfordshire. This county is named after the settlement of Hertford, with this name meaning crossing for deer. A hart is an old name for a stag, and a ford is a part of a river low enough to cross. And as for Buckinghamshire, this too comes from the town of Buckingham. With this town's name, we have Ham, like in Hampton, meaning water meadow, and the former part is thought to come from an ancient landowner called Booker. And yes, wait a second, what is that house or palace? I don't know what you call it. It is gorgeous. Not only the architecture, but also the uh, landscape around it is that is incredibly beautiful. I don't know if this is where some of the royals live, maybe, or if it's just like a rich, rich person that lives there. I don't know. To meaning water meadow, and the former part is thought to come from an ancient landowner called Booker. And yes, it was the Duke of Buckingham who the Queen's primary dig was named in honour of. Oxfordshire, the county, is once again named after the city of Oxford, most known for its university, of course, and this is a pretty easy one to figure out, especially as we've already covered Hartford. If Hartford was a ford slash crossing for heart slash deer, then it should come as no surprise that Oxford is a ford slash crossing for oxen. The Gloucester in Gloucestershire comes from a town yet again, and it's thought to mean bright place, though what was so bright about it, I'm not too sure. But some think this bright relates to bright in the collection 
clever sense of the word, not in the well-lit sense. And just oh. north of here, on the Welsh border, is Herefordshire, named after the town of Hereford. We have yet another crossing, but for Hera, a Hera is an old term for formation of soldiers, so the name means soldier crossing. We're still carrying on with Shires, with Worcestershire, most famous for their sauce and its tricky pronunciation. Once again, it's named after a town, that being Worcester, which is believed to come from a name of a tribe who once lived there. Like Oxford, Warwickshire is too well known for its highly regarded university in the town of Warwick, with Warwick meaning dwelling by the weir, with a weir being a small man-made dam in a river. And then we have Northamptonshire, once again with Hampton, which means water meadow. So here we have a North Northern Water Meadow, which went on to be the name of a city, which went on to be the name of a county. Bedfordshire is named after the market town of Bedford, which once again relates to a ford crossing, and possibly an old Saxon sheaf of this land called a bidder, not an actual crossing for actual beds, I'm afraid. And it came um, I just, I learned in my, one of my Alexander the Great videos, the last one I think, they were talking about uh, fords and the rivers and I had no idea what a ford was because we just, I feel like that's not really a term that's used a lot over here in the US, maybe it's used a little bit more in Britain, it would seem like because he's, he's talking a lot about river fords. So maybe that's more of a familiar term for Brits than it is for Americans. I mean, I'm sure that some you know it's it's referred to a little bit over here but it's just not a word that you hear at all like ever over here so that's why i didn't know what a what a ford was i just never really run across the term before honestly like i'd i'd heard of it before but it's just not something that um i had, I had come across in the context of, of learning what it was so i don't know like is that a, is the is a ford a term that you guys use a lot over in britain or um or maybe you're just a little bit more aware of it, maybe, because of some of the... Because it has inspired a lot of names, apparently, of these counties. So I'm just wondering if it's a little bit more ingrained in your vocabulary. Saxon sheaf of this land called a bidder, not an actual crossing for actual beds, I'm afraid. And Cambridgeshire to its east is named after Cambridge, which is too known for its university. The bridge in Cambridge relates to an actual bridge, that being a bridge over the river Cam the Cam Bridge. This is incredibly logical etymology. We can take a brief break from Shires luckily with Norfolk and Suffolk. These names simply mean Norfolk and the South Folk, which are two incredibly simple to understand. And then we have England's smallest county, Rutland. No one actually knows what happens here. The name is thought to possibly mean Rota's land, with Rota being an old chief in the land. Is that a lighthouse? Is that just a... Uh... It's a very strange looking building. It looks like maybe just like an old style lighthouse, maybe? I don't know, it looks like there might be something up in the tower there, like a light, but maybe not. I don't know, it doesn't quite look like a lighthouse. Kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. If you know what that is, let me know. I'd be interested to know what the heck. The name is thought to possibly mean Rota's land, with Rota being an old chief in the land. Their name is thought to possibly mean cheerful slash bright, which is unexpectedly pleasant. Back to the Shires I'm afraid however, as west of Rutland is Leicestershire, home of the unexpected underdogs of the Premier League a few years back. The county is named after the city of Leicester. Oh, uh, since I've been getting into more uh, football, Euro the European style of football, a lot of you have asked me to watch the Leicestershire story of that that football club so um, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna get to that in the future just just FYI expected underdogs of the Premier League a few years back. The county is named after the city of Leicester. This is the first time we have spotted the Cester slash Chester suffix. This means town, oh, yeah. but specifically a Roman town. So the city's name is thought to mean a Roman town by the river Ligor, which is thought to be a former name of the river Saw. Next up we have the dullest name county the West Midlands, named so due to being the west of the Midlands. However, it's full of popular cities such as Birmingham, Coventry and Wolverhampton. And to the north of the West Midlands, we have Staffordshire, popular for their dog breed. Here we have yet another ford, with the former part of this name meaning riverbank slash shore. As for Shropshire, this too is named after a settlement, though that settlement is now called Shrewsbury, with Shrewsbury thought to mean the fortified place in the scrub. Cheshire is named after the city of Chester, which as we mentioned simply means a Roman town. Why Lewis Carroll named his books Cat after this county however I am not too sure. Derbyshire is named after the place of Derby, which comes from an old English and means a deer village. Robin Hood's Nottinghamshire is named after the city of Nottingham, which means homestead of snot people, with snot being 
being a former chief here. Not the most pleasant name, I'm sure we can all agree. Okay. And Lincolnshire is named after the city of Lincoln, which is a Latin name coming from a word meaning pool slash a lake. Apologies for whizzing for all these shots. I didn't know Lincoln was a Latin word. I've studied Latin and I don't remember ever coming across Lincoln. It's not even spelled like a Latin name. Like Latin doesn't have that type of spelling. What? Sorry, I have to look this up. This is really like messing with my mind here. Oh, the Latin, the Latinized form is a lindum, meaning pool or lake. So the spelling was kind of changed, I guess. Lindum makes sense. Lincoln does not for Latin. So, okay, now that that's settled. Charles just then, they're just starting to make my head spin. Though the biggest shard is of Lincoln, which is a Latin name coming from a word meaning pool slash a lake. Apologies for whizzing for all these shards just then, they're just starting to make my head spin. Though the biggest shire is of course Yorkshire. The York part of this name comes from the city of York and is thought to mean yew tree estate. Yorkshire is so large that it's actually split into four counties. Three of these are simply called North, West and South Yorkshire. The East Yorkshire is actually called the East Riding of Yorkshire. The other parts of Yorkshire are known as ridings too, but the word isn't present in their official names. Riding is a term of Viking origin and simply means a third part, as historically Yorkshire was split into three of these ridings. It makes sense for the word to be of Viking roots as Yorkshire really was the hub of the Viking conquest of Britain. Next up we have the county of Greater Manchester, which contains perhaps the second most well-known city in England outside of London, Manchester. The greater part relates to the wider area, but Manchester itself is actually thought to mean breast-like hill due to the shape of hills in the area. I feel like more people should be talking about this. West of Greater Manchester, we have Merseyside, which contains another famous English city, Liverpool, home of the Beatles, of course. The county's name comes from the River Mersey, with the name Mersey meaning Boundary River, maybe because it's so close to the Welsh border. And we have one final shire, Lang Lancashire, which is named after the city of Lancaster, which means Roman town on the River Loon. Continuing up north, we have Cumbria, the northwesternmost point of England. And we actually have an entire video about this name somewhere on the channel. This is actually a Celtic name and means land of the Cumley, the people who live there. This relates closely to the Welsh name for Wales, Cumley, as they are both Britonic words meaning fellow countrymen. East of Cumbria, we have County Durham. This is named after the town of Durham in the county. And the name simply oh, means. Oh wow, that is. I they, these like buildings. This is a castle. It looks like on on water with trees and mountains and bridges. <laughs> like that's my that's my type of landscape right there. Again, really beautiful. Of County Durham. This is named after the town of Durham in the county, and the name simply means a city on a hill, as it is well a city on a hill. And above Durham is the county of Tyne and Ware, which contains most noticeably the wonderful city of Newcastle upon Tyne. This county is simply named after the two rivers that run through it, the Tyne and the Ware. And finally, we reach England's northernmost point, Northumberland. This name is pretty darn simple, especially once you know there's a river called the Humber nearby. This name simply means the place north of the river Humber. And there you have it, from Cornwall and its horn people, Manchester and its not safe for work hills, and the many, many shires. This has been a journey across my home nation of England, and how its counties got their names. Well, wow, so that was a lot of information in a very short amount of time, but it's really cool to kind of see where the uh, etymology of the county names came from. A lot of them were named after rivers, a lot of them named after settlements by rivers, a lot of them named for the cities that are in them. And we have a nice mix of like the Saxony, which I recently learned in one of my football videos that that's a German settlement basically. So we have some Saxons, some Romans, some Celtics, some uh, I mean there was another one in there. Was it the, the Vikings? So you guys have a lot of place names that are named from people coming from other locations and just kind of like here in the US we have a lot of place names from people coming from a lot of different <laughs> locations around the world. Except obviously our locations are slightly different. You know we have a lot from England, we have a lot from you know the Dutch, we have a lot from the Spaniards. So a little bit different mix but um, I guess we also kind of inherited all of these as well because we have people from all of these places coming over here to the US and so we have 
like he mentioned, a lot of similar names like New Hampshire. So that was a cool video, cool kind of like learning a little bit more about the history of the country, uh, the different settlements there, and looking at a little bit more of the landscape and the geography of it. So one of the things I want to do on my channel is to kind of continue with some of the national parks. I've done the Lake District uh, before on here, and I would like to get to the other 14 national parks. I think there are 15 of them. So I think that also would be just similar to this, kind of showing me more about the geography and landscape and the history of the country. And I don't want to forget, you know, the rest of the UK, Scotland, uh, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and of course just Ireland as well. Even though I know Ireland is not part of the UK, I have at least learned that much. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did. We got more stuff like this coming up in the near future, and Roger here and I will see you next time.